Hi guys, Story Recaps here, today, I am going to explain, horror mystery and thriller film, called, The Perch. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. At the start of the film, we witness various scenes of people killing and assaulting one another, as well as houses being burned down. There are several shootouts and gang clashes that result in hundreds of deaths. In the United States, the Republican and Democratic parties collapsed in 2014. A financial crisis gave birth to, the new founding fathers of America, a third political party, NFFA. Brecken, the President of the United States, is the party's leader. He and his party colleagues devised an extreme law known as the Purge. Once a year, for 12 hours straight, all crimes are allowed, and no emergency services are accessible. People are free to express their emotions in any way they want, even murder. The year is currently 2022. As a result of the purge, the United States has become nearly crime-free, and unemployment has decreased to 1%. It is the purge's day. To be secure throughout the night, James Sandon, returns to his house in a rich gated neighborhood. He notices his neighbors putting blue flowers in their front yards to demonstrate their support for the purging system. James, too, has a blue flower, indicating that he supports the purge. James intends to spend the night in his cell with his wife Mary and their two children, Zoe and Charlie. Zoe is in her room with Henry, her lover. Because James dislikes their connection, Henry slips out of the house. As Henry slips out the door, the two notice a neighbor sharpening a weapon for tonight. Grace Farron, their annoying neighbor, approaches Mary as she plants the flowers in their yard. The two discuss the upcoming lockdown in an hour before splitting ways. Charlie, James's son, is next shown playing with his frightening robotic toy, Timmy. Later that evening, the family has a meal together before going to their study area to prepare for the purging. First, James activates the security camera strategically placed throughout the residence. Then he activates the security system, which lowers metal doors and windows, thus shutting every conceivable opening in the house. Finally, he pulls a rifle from the safe for protection. The family then gathers in front of the television to see the formal start of the purge. It is announced that the purge has begun. Weapons classified as class 4 or below are now legal. All other firearms, however, are prohibited. Because government officials with a rank of 10 or higher are immune to the purge, an attack on them is still deemed criminal. After a siren sounds, any and all crimes, including murder, are allowed for 12 hours. There will be no police, fire, or other emergency medical services accessible. As the program ends, the siren begins to sound, signaling that the purge has begun. James assures his children that they will be all right since they can afford protection. Zoe then returns to her room. Charlie, on the other hand, appears to dislike the notion of the purge, but James attempts to persuade him that it allows people to vent their frustrations. He, too, heads to his room. Zoe wakes up to a thump in her room and discovers Henry, who had gotten in before the security system was activated. Henry informs Zoe that he wants to speak with her father about their relationship. Because James cannot kick him out of the house at this moment, he believes this is the ideal opportunity for him to convince her father. Everyone in the house is calming while Charlie plays with his robot Timmy. He trails Timmy around the home, spying on everything with Timmy's camera. He sends Timmy to the study room to check the security tape. He sees a man running from someone and stops in front of their residence. Charlie dashes outside to check the security camera from a safe distance, when he notices a guy pleading for help outside their home. Charlie disarms the metal door to assist him. At the same time, Henry walks over to James' room to speak with him. When James realizes Charlie has disarmed the metal door, he rushes to the study area and hurriedly closes the metal doors. However, the guy gains entry. When Henry fires from the stairs at James, Mary, Charlie, and the stranger, they are all in the room. He wishes to murder James in order to be with Zoe. The two open fire on each other, and Henry is shot. When Zoe notices this, she protects Henry and takes him away, and James looks around to discover that the weird man has also left. To secure his family's protection, James places them in a safe room and goes in search of Zoe. In the room, he discovers Henry's lifeless body. The man is standing just behind him as he checks Henry's pulse, but James isn't aware of him. Through the video, Charlie notices a group of strangers approaching his home and contacts his parents. The members of the organization are masked and wield weapons. The group leader stands directly in front of the camera and begins speaking. He recognizes James and informs the family that one of their targets has been lost. 
The gang learned from a neighbor that the target had crashed into their home. The group now wants the target to come out so they can kill him. If the family does not send him out quickly, they threaten to break into the house and kill everyone since they know how to break in. The gang then turns off the electricity to the house, and everything becomes dark. James urges the family that they must find the man and push him outdoors, but Charlie is hesitant. James and Mary set out to find him. Charlie, too, searches for him with Timmy's assistance and discovers him hidden under the sofa in the living room. He flashes Timmy's light at the man and commands him to follow, Charlie is attempting to help the man. He leads him to his room, where he has made a hideout in the closet. Timmy shines his light to the hiding place, and the guy notices. He eventually enters it after thanking Timmy. The purger's chief then summons James to the front entrance. The two converse through an opening, and James informs him that they are not trying to help the stranger. The leader then murders one of his own men to intimidate James, stating that the group's equipment to break down the door is on its way. Fearing for his family's safety, James returns to hunt for the stranger. When he enters Charlie's room, he notices the man holding Zoe at gunpoint. Mary appears behind him as he threatens James. James and the guy struggle, and James accidentally shoots him. The man is then tied to a chair by him and Mary. The man, on the other hand, begins to fight back. James instructs Mary to pick at the stranger's wound in order for him to give up. Charlie is terrified as he witnesses all of this. They are about to hand him up to the gang, but realize that they will not be any better for it. The stranger also offers James that he would accompany him outdoors in order to save his family. James realizes they are wrong and informs Mary that they will have to fight back and defend themselves. The purger's equipment for opening the doors and windows arrives just then. They connect massive chains to the doors and tug on them until they break through. James delivers Charlie a revolver and instructs him to seek refuge in the basement. In his haste, he forgets to untie the stranger and prepares to battle. While the stranger tries to free himself, Zoe hides in her room. Purgers are now breaking in. One of them unlocks the main entrance for the commander, who enters with his gun. While they are hiding around the home, a purger enters via the basement entrance and attacks Charlie. James shoots the man from behind as he is ready to murder him. The gang runs about the house crazily. Most of them are killed by James, but the leader comes in front of him and stabs him. The leader thanks James and kisses his forehead as he lies dead on the ground. The others begin destroying everything in the house. Charlie sits in the study room, watching security tape, when he witnesses two persons approach and murder the purgers in their front yard. Grace and her husband are their next door neighbors, he notes. All of the neighbors gradually gather to help the sand ends. At the same moment, Mary is apprehended by two of the purgers. As Mary pleads for her life, the girl purger tickles her. Mr. and Mrs. Halverson, their neighbors, shoot the two dead just as she is going to attack Mary with her machete. Mary goes to assist James. But, before they can act, the leader enters the room. He clocks his rifle and expresses gratitude for their sacrifice. Zoe emerges out of nowhere and shoots the guy dead before he can kill them. When the neighbors arrive, the family sits around James, wailing as he dies. Mary praises them for their assistance, but it turns out that the neighbors intend to kill the Sandins. They are envious of James' wealth and wish to rid themselves of it by murdering the family. They then transport James' body to the other room and kidnap the others. Mary begs them to leave her children, and they duct tape all three of them. The neighbors then clasp hands and thank the new founding fathers for giving them this chance. They've always envied Sandin's ideal family, and when the purgers broke into the house today, they took the chance. The stranger from earlier saves them just before they are ready to harm the family. He murders Mr. Halverson and holds Grace at gunpoint. The neighbors have formed a queue in front of them. Grace requests that Mary murder them in order to put an end to this, however, Mary has had enough of these deaths. She instructs everyone to wait until 7 o'clock, when the purge will end. After a few minutes, everyone is seated at the dining table in quiet. The stranger continues to aim his rifle at the neighbors in order to keep them in line. Charlie and Zoe sob as they grab their father's hand. Grace attempts to pull the gun from Mary's grip, but Mary breaks her nose instead, cursing at her. Finally, the sirens sound, signaling the end of the purge. Mary instructs everyone to leave her house, and a stranger also leaves at the end, after Mary thanks him for his assistance. The film concludes with the three surviving members of the family looking at multiple dead bodies outside the house. According to a voice in the background, this was the most effective purge to date. Other news outlets indicate that the streets of Los Angeles are flooded with dead bodies and that the stock market has reached an all-time high.
Finally, a guy declares that he is no longer proud to be an American because both of his sons were killed in the purge. Subscribe and turn on the notifications. We daily upload videos like this.